preview the memorial coming up this weekend. Fun event. Um, great event. Uh, a lot of drama last year with that one. So Yeah, well, it's, it's been an interesting couple of years because two years ago you had the back-to-back weeks event. Yep. Where because of the you know I think one of the tournaments got canceled because of COVID, so they just did back to back at at that course. And then last year, John Rom six shot lead going to the final round. They tell him, "Hey, you have COVID, you're <laughs> out." Basically, we want to have television ratings, so see ya. No, no, yeah, <laughs> not really. <laughs> uh, which is funny because that's Rom- actually a good conspiracy. I never actually thought know, about that. That's we we need ratings for this good. tournament. No. Uh, Jack was like Barbara. No, <laughs> I mean they were the only thing on, so like that's yeah. like that's actually not a bad. But I think it only pissed fans off more. Oh so yeah, well and again, look, like hey, we're now we're making a joke at the expense of COVID, which we don't want to do. But right. either way, Rom would have most likely won that tournament. Um, didn't get it. Cantley ends up winning it. Um, in an exciting fashion. Uh, so now obviously, and then becomes player of the year over John Rom because yeah. John Rom <laughs> only had one win. Cantley yeah. had four, so it's <laughs> different. But yeah. um, I, I think I mean I love this event. I love the golf course. A lot of fun to watch. Um, awesome par fives, like, which I, I, like I really enjoy that. I love watching kind of the featured hole coverage on Thursday, Friday. We'll be a little busy, so we won't be able to get all of it. Um, but but I think it's a really fun event. Um, so obviously with a great field, and that's the big yeah. thing. I mean, it's it's almost we just two weeks ago we had the PJ Championship, great field. This is almost all the different play, you know same players are playing it as well. Yeah, this is kind of your one event that you get a lot of the top fifty in the world coming back to play before the, you know the U.S. Open in a mm-hmm. couple weeks. So um, it's one. It's got a lot. I mean, obviously being Jack's tournament, it, it has a lot of you know, Mustard. yeah, a lot, a lot of elegance to it. I guess yeah. you could say you want to win Jack's turn because people you know consider him the goat. Um, I exactly. don't, but putting that take out there now. <laughs> but I think what we want to do is every week we're going to pick a winner, and every week we're going to, you know, we'll figure out some sort of pick, whether it could be like, hey, we're both going to pick a guy to miss the cut or something like that. And I think this week we're both picking top tens and a winner. Yep. To mm-hmm. start. Yep. Um, and so do you want me to go first with the winner of the top ten, or what, what do you want? How do you want to do this? I go first with we'll go first with our winners on each side, and then we'll go back to top. And you 10. want me to kick it off? Yeah, go ahead and kick this bad boy off. All right. So th- this is not a hot take by any means. Um. But he's been overdue for a win. Yep. Just get recently came off a runner-up finish at the PGA Championship in a playoff. Tremendous ball striker. He's not going to win a tournament where it's a 18, 19 under guy because he's not a good enough putter. Right. But when it's an event where it's premier ball striking is value, Will Zalatoris is the best ball striker on the planet. And so I think he's going to finally break through and get this win this week. I was just ripping on how I, I jumped off that bandwagon, yeah. and now I'm jumping <laughs> right back, back on, on. baby. Um, but no, he is, he's I, that is my pick. I, I, I think, I mean, well, and I think he'll be like around contention because of how good he is. And he just needs to have a hot week with the putter. And that's just what, and like a hot week for him is like an average week for a normal PJ Tour pro. Yeah. All right. I, I like that. That's, I mean, you got to... Hey, he's plus three thousand. That's not a bad bet, you know. All, I mean, all odds for the most part, and anytime you're betting, it's yeah. good odds. Um, my pick this week. So, uh, unfortunately, if you're watching this on YouTube, we typically have we'll have a canvas here with our logo on it, and I know some of you out there have already seen that logo. I'm going with the guy that happened to be our, I guess, our brand child of lip and putts, and that's <laughs> Colin Morikawa. That's a good pick. So, I think us starting this podcast. It's going to, you know, he's going to embody the Lip and Putts podcast. Mm-hmm. Hopefully not literally, but, you know, we're sending the good vibes down to him this weekend, uh, and, and that's my pick to win it. It's kind of more of a safer pick, but that's who I like. Random tidbit, and, and I could be wrong on this, so I'm trying to quickly figure out, is, is this Memorial Tournament presented by Workday? I don't It could be. Um, because he won both of those, like, random Workday events. Last year, and he's he's won at this event, but where like Workday was a presenting sponsor because of the COVID yeah. reshuffle and everything. Yeah, it's a Memorial Tournament presented by Workday. Not a bad pick. He's two and zero in those. That's up. Saber metrics, baby, and, and premium golf ball striker. Yeah, that's, so we're both on the premium ball striker. Yeah. I mean, that's what I have in my DraftKings lineup. All right, there we go. That's this is all good vibes mm-hmm. that you're, you're throwing our way. But so you got to pick the brand child of the lip and putts. Oh yeah, I mean. Fresh off the Charles, Charles Schwab Challenge, where he—that's where that logo's from. And he lipped out to lose to Berger yeah. on the COVID restart. So no, I, I write it. You know, if either of those guys come with it, it's gonna be them two in a playoff watch. That would be and, hot. Dude, we look like geniuses. Yeah, but we both know that they're gonna be like that's no chance that that's gonna happen. Yeah, probably not. But uh, if, if it does happen, you heard it here first. Yeah. So top ten, I was going back and forth because because one guy I really like, and I think he's hitting the shit out of the ball right now, and he also has really good um, short game, but. He'll be a better pick for later down the road. Like, I love the Irishman Shane Lowry. Oh. I'm not going with him. Okay. I'm going with a guy who I don't think is exempt for the U.S. Open yet. Oh, He's boy. from the Northeast. 
the U.S. opens at Brookline. He needs, I mean, he can still do the qualifiers and everything, but based on his play, he can get in the top 50 in the world and get that exemption mm-hmm. or, or win it. These, these different things. And so I think that's really important to Keegan Bradley. Okay. So I'm going to go for him to top 10. I don't think he wins, but plus 450, top 10. He's been playing better lately. Yep. Um, he was he was in contention recently. He wasn't able to get it done. But I think Keegan Bradley comes away with a good week. I don't know if he'll officially get in the U.S. Open, but I think this is going to be another stepping stone leading him to that tournament. Yeah, it's been fun to kind of watch his resurgence, right? Yeah. As, you know, sometimes when guys go down a certain path, they never come back from. And, and I guess you look oh, at man. a guy like, like <laughs> Smiley Kaufman, too, yeah. like he— they eventually like they they fizzle out on tour and he was danger you know when the anchored putting went away like that hurt him immensely and so he's back and mm-hmm. I, again I love watching Keegan I don't know how many times that like this has quickly turned into a Keegan podcast yeah. but the interesting thing is like I'm not a huge fan of watching him yeah. like I, I I like actually like when he was in contention recently I was like man that's like the last guy I wanted to win but then I like found out about it. he's in close to getting and I was like okay like makes sense like, he, he, like yeah that. yeah and so. But I mean, yeah, but yeah I'll, I'll jump on the bandwagon for this week. Who do you uh, got? Top 10. Uh, top 10. So this is kind of a, another guy that I think, you know, he's been sitting out of majors recently and uh, kind of a poster child for PJ Tour. Slick Rick. I love that. So he's made two straight cuts. He's made <laughs> two straight cuts. He, he Big deal. Start. I mean, for him, it is though. Like that, I never thought. Oh yeah. S- you you would have to say that, but yeah. Ricky st- seems to find something. Like one he, top thirty finish of yeah, those two cuts. Yeah. I, he, some resemblance in, in in some golf game that we've seen in the past. So I I think he hopefully gets it done this week. Um. So that's my guy to get in the top ten because you got to have like wicked odds on that, right? Yeah. I, it's got to be. I, I think him to win the event was like plus. Thirty three thousand. See if I can find it for you. Something real crazy. Quick. I don't have it up on my phone. But um, um, plus seven hundred top ten. He's plus ten thousand to win. Okay. So if you're looking for the juice, no, yeah. I like that pick. I mean, it, again, we're talking about resurgence. Uh, like it, two straight cuts. Like people think is that a big deal? Like I mean, making the cuts a big deal. He didn't mm-hmm. play great uh, on Sunday at the Schwab. Two T fifty seven is what he finished, but he he was top uh, almost t- top twenty five. I think he was twenty seven. Yeah. At the PGA, so I like that pick. Um. He might be another guy I put in my DraftKings lineup again, actually. You got to do it. Just, just loading that thing up. So, yeah. um, But no, either way, I, I, you know, we'll see how those guys go. Knowing us, we probably just made them all miss the cut or something like that, <laughs> but we'll deal with that next week yeah. um, when we start attacking our, uh, our own picks.